It's time to ask a lawyer with Yasmin Young and attorney Josh Ramos of Ramos and Ramos Attorneys at Law. All right, I'm here with attorney Josh Ramos, and we're going to the phone lines for our first question. Hello. Hi, Yasmin. It's Maggie. Hey, Maggie. I'm wondering if I could ask a question to the lawyer. Sure. Okay, that's cool. When I was 18, I got a car. It was $12,000. I ended up crashing the car, and I stopped making the payments. The company who towed the car and fixed the car kept it because I couldn't afford to pay them, and I'm wondering if that was legal with the lien on the car. Uh, hi, Maggie. Unfortunately, that is something the repair shop is able to do. It's called a garageman's lien. And as long as they have a DMV repair shop license, if they do some kind of repair on their car or your car and it hits X number of dollars and, and you can't pay them for that, then they have the right to take a lien on the car and then they can put it up for auction. Um, you know, my, my thought would be follow through with that to see how much they got from the auction because if it's over what that they're owed, technically that's your money anyways. Uh, so it is something that they can do. It's like a mechanic doing it on your house. If they do some kind of repair and you don't pay them, they could put a lien on your house. Same thing for a licensed repair shop. They could put a lien on your car as well and withhold that car, charge you storage as well until you decide or until you make payment on that car. All right. And our second question is coming in today from WBLK.com where you can also submit your question. And this is from Sharia H who says, my daughter babysits for some of the parents in our neighborhood. I heard the lady asking the question about neighborhood kids swimming at her pool and whether she would be responsible if they got hurt that made me think of my daughter babysitting at our home if any of the kids that she watches got hurt in our house or yard would we be responsible hey sharia uh, the answer to that again is yes you could be responsible for that because it's your house and is a duty as a landowner or a tenant if you invite people into your home you have to exercise reasonable care in how you keep it for instance uh, you know best thing i can think of with kids is i got this little two-year-old at home or my seven-year-old when she was two doing the same thing uh, She'd love to go play with the drawers in the kitchen and, you know, she'd found her hand in the knife drawer once. So then we lock it up and then we figure out other ways to stop her from getting in there. So if you have these people in your house or, you know, let your daughter babysit, you kind of got to watch out for these things because you could be responsible as a premises owner or holder. And, uh, you know, that's something you don't want to do. Also, my advice to you is make sure you get some rent rental or property owners insurance. Talk to your insurance adjuster and say, hey, every once in a while, my daughter babysits for someone. And as long as she's not opening up an official daycare care center they should be covered just make sure you have runner's insurance or property owner's insurance to protect you because last thing you want is a claim to be made and you don't you know you'd love a free attorney to help you out and a policy to back you up in the event that someone is injured all right let's go to the power line for our next question 644-9393 hello who is this Yes, my name is Steven. Okay, my question is, I was actually scammed by uh, an insurance agent. Uh, my in, my insurance policy was going to be increased by $50,000, which would have been a total of 150000 coverage. When I got my application or my policy in the mail, she, first of all, didn't give me a copy of my receipt that I signed. But when I got in the mail, she crossed out the number, the 150000 and wrote 50000 under it and initialed it as if I signed it. And I I wanted to know how do I pursue that because had I died before the, um, I got my policy, my family would have been out of a hundred thousand dollars. She signed my, she forged my signature and everything. Uh, Stephen, thanks for calling in. This, this to me just seems like an atrocity. Um, I, I, one thing I can't stand is insurance companies or agents uh, trying to take advantage of people. Uh, it sounds like you're definitely a victim here. Uh, one thing you know to figure out what your actual damages are, I'd kind of want to know what kind of insurance policy is this? Is this a whole life insurance? Is this a term life insurance? because that kind of dictates what your damages are. So if it's a term life and you just decided to up it, maybe we can go back to what your original 100000 was. Uh, it sounds like you could file some complaints with the Department of Insurance for forging your name, changing the policies, and the failure to disclose. Uh, it's more so the penalties that the Department of Financial uh, Services, which governs the insurance companies, would have penalties for them, but not for your benefit. So right now, it'd be really, you know, my interest would say, what can we do for you? And it'd probably get your old policy back, uh, probably, you know, get a refund for everything you paid because that wasn't what you signed up for. And then go to another, you want to bring your business to a new company anyways, because who wants to do business with a company like that? So, you know, again, you, you have the option of filing some complaints. You can probably go back to your original policy if it's a term policy or, you know, if it's a whole life policy and you're trying to build some value up, you might want to talk to the boss uh, or this lady's boss or broker here to figure out what happened and, you know, how much money did you lose in your investment into this policy as well? 
for a more in-depth consultation with Ramos and Ramos regarding personal injury, workers' compensation, or worksite accidents, call 716-810-6140 or visit them online at ramosandramos.com. You can submit your questions at wblk.com. 